and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be doing a couple of things. First, a bit help to self-help. That is, we're going to be actually taking a look at something I should have done way ago in my introduction video that is already quite some years ago. That is namely how to actually use the help file properly, or at least to get started by using it. And second, today we're going to be looking at how to return some scalars and matrices. In other words, we want to look at the stored results that you have after you run, for instance, a summarize command or a regression command. All these things can be quite useful because sometimes if you don't know, well, you can always go and get help somewhere else. And remember, the help file here is not only the only place you can get help. You can also go to places like the Startup Forum. It's also where I learn most of my things. You can even find stuff on Stack Overflow and heck, nowadays you can just write everything on ChatGGB. So choose your poison essentially or whatever gets you there essentially. So the point we're going to do today Suppose you are unsure how the regression command work. You've learned somewhere, you've seen that, hey, this is called rec. So you can just say, write help rec and simply just see, okay, what are we gonna get? You get this nice help file. And for a lot of people, this can be just looking very strange and not quite sure what's going on. So let's take a look at a few of the things. I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but I can point you towards some things you need to know. So first is the syntax. And what you notice very quickly here is that it's actually called regress, and I just call regret for short. Most often, it's going to be highlighted up here how short you can make the command for starter to recognize it with underscoring here. For reg, it doesn't do it, but for many others, it does. And you can even see for some of the options that you can choose here, you can go all the way down for L for level or B for beta. You don't have to write it out. Of course, I would recommend that you do so because you often forget what all these shortened things stand for later if you look back on your old do files months later. So what you see up here, you regress a dependent variable, you can always click and check it out, and then it's optional what's in the squared brackets here. That means also here you don't have to have independent variable because, well, you can also just regress on one, then it's just on the mean. And of course you can include any number of independent variables, up to other restrictions we're not going to talk about today. You can add if, in, and weights. All these things are discussed down here, so you get to learn all these different things. But why is this so important? These are the options. And please note, options always start with a comma. That means you run the main part of the command, say regress, dependent on y on 1x, say, and then you can add a number of constants or number of, sorry, options that you wish to add. And that can be, for instance, you don't want a constant. It could be you report, want to report betas instead. Who knows? But actually, that's not really what I only want to show you here. You can always scroll down to the bottom section and you get example files here. And we're going to return to some of these examples in just a moment. But here you can also see this is where you basically see, okay, how does this actually work? I know it's regress. How does it work? Oh, regress uh, miles per gallon, weight on foreign. Okay, job done. You can just copy this and try it out yourself because there's these nice data sets that we're going to be using in just a moment as well. Suppose this was for some reason not enough. There's a complete entry here. Yeah, this is only the short version of the help file. If I would click here, we're going to get a much more extensive file here. And it even gives you a nice little quick start menu up here. So this is a really good place to go. A place where I've learned most of the things that I need to tackle nowadays. So for instance, come again. You can use help for regress, for instance. Let's close this for a moment. You can, of course, also go for help for, say, summarize. That one is a little more interesting because, for instance, that one actually comes with two things, either the function itself or the command. But let's look at the command. And you see here's a nice example of, you can just instead of call it sum or the whole word summarize, you can shorten it all the way down to SU, easy peasy, or detail, mean only, all these nice, cool things. But this brings us to the second part and something I've been asked a lot, and hence this video, how do I access stored results and how do Stata actually store this? What Stata in principle does, it, it stores in different kinds of classes, say, and the most common ones are E and R. If I am not mistaken, R refers to general commands, such as summarize that you see here, and E is, re is referred to estimation commands. E for estimation, that seems like a very good thing. So let's look at some of these examples because there are a number of things you need to be careful with when starting to access and perhaps using these numbers. Previously, if a student often, or even myself in the beginning, I didn't know how to access this, so I would just copy the number down and use it for later. 
that's hella inefficient. So let's try and how to access this to make it a bit smarter. So for instance, you can look at describe. So for instance, we want to use a data set, sys use auto, because that's always a good place to start. So let's load in the automobile data set. I don't think I have to explain this, because, but in any case, you can always go and take a look. We can just write the command describe that gives a nice overview of what's in the data set. It basically, well, it describes it. And you see 74 observations uh, shared over 12 variables. And what we can do here, we can start seeing all these different things that actually returns because describe itself is already a command that stores a few things. So we can actually just use the command return and list it and we want them all. And then again, wait, I don't know how return works. Well, open the help file and check it out. Then you're going to see all the examples as well. And then you can see what it actually returns to us. It returns some scalars and some macros. Scalars are just numbers. So you can think them as just numeric values where macros are, you can see with the quotation marks, they are indeed seen as strings or words essentially. And so these are things you can see it actually looks at here. And uh, if anybody haven't caught on to it yet, I'm actually at state 18, we're getting somewhere like uh, just a recently installed and downloaded and whatever. So now we upgraded from 17 to 18. So uh, the question is now when is 19? I still have to learn all the new tricks of 18, but uh, for me, it just seems the same so far, at least. Moving on, we can then see you return all these cool things. So you have to be slightly careful. Suppose now in this data set, I want to summarize miles per gallon or price is actually more fun to start with. And I didn't want to see what does it return? I go to return list all. Okay, that's cool. Then I now know it stores the number of observations, it stores the sum here, it stores the mean. That's often something you want to access. You have to be careful because it gets overwritten every time you run it again. So if I summarize now miles per gallon and I want to again return list all of them. Let's move this here so we have all the space. Then if I do this again, you will now see that of course it is different. It is of course is the new mean. So if you now want to generate a new variable based on this here, you have to be very careful that the latest time you ran is indeed on the one you are interested in. And how do we access this? How do we use this? Well, let's take a look at this here. So suppose now we want to, how do we, what can we do? What can we do? We can subtract the mean. So if we can make a centered value of miles per gallon. So miles per gallon centered, that often is seen. That means basically we take miles per gallon and we subtract now the mean. And how does the mean look like here? I see R mean. So let's just try that out. Sometimes it's just logical, I hope. And let's see how this actually works. Well, first new this, the, the command actually ran. Let's summarize the two things. Miles per gallon, miles per gallon centered. And let's see what do we get. Yes, okay, so now we have indeed a mean from the earlier and you can see we centered. This is virtually zero. It's uh, so many zeros dot whatever. So I count this as virtually zero. Same standard deviation, we just moved it essentially. We centered it, of course. Mm -hmm. So now you can see this is actually one way we can just call these things. And that's, I think that's pretty cool. But now you need to remember here, return, that shows you all the, for the R, R class, I believe. And E return shows for E class. So let's go some E class examples for you as well. So what we can do here, we can run a regression price miles per gallon and let's add in rep 78 that's the re repair record i believe we can always check what it is we run it we get our good old reliable regression output here there should be nothing new under the sun here ladies and gentlemen but what we cannot do can now do we can use the e return not return but e return and we want to list them and want to get them all and then you're going to see it's going to show yeah a lot so some would say they're the same, return, E return, and they in principle are. They return store commands that are stored two different places. But others will also be more uh, funny and say, haha, E return just returns a lot more. And that is most often the case, as you can see, E return has a lot more in it. You can see we have the scalars, the numbers, we have the macros, these were the strings, and we also have matrices. And matrices, for instance, you can see all the betas, but you can also see all these, all the estimated coefficients, E, B. So we can also access those, which is uh, something I find really cool to do, because often you need to know what are the regression coefficients that you got. We have them stored somewhere. You don't see them immediately here, but they're just stored in a matrix. A matrix, oh, I need to dodge that, uh, that bullet, right? So matrix is the command we need to do here. 
And you already see, just like Starter, even I think 16 started doing this, or was it 17, comes with all these nice suggestions. So we want to list them all, and we want to list what is inside EV. So let's try it out and see what's in here. And you see here, miles per gallon, rep, and constant. That is very cool. We can do many more things with this. You remember in the beginning, we have a nice display command that makes data able just to display numbers or work as a calculator. And for instance, we just want to look at, and now comes some little tricky stuff here. It's called underscore B and put inside a square bracket. Hope everybody can see what's going on here. Let's scroll down a little bit to make sure. And then we want to, of course, just look at, say, miles per gallon. Then if I am not mistaken, it will display only that number. Indeed, we check it fits. It does indeed fit. And you can even go much further and you can actually use this display command to calculate, say, a predicted value. So this must be a little, um, it's going to be a little writing for me here, but you can do the constant. It's just called constant, ladies and gentlemen, so don't worry about it. I think actually you can shorten it and call it a constant underscore again. So please note here, there's a lot of underscores going on here. And you would actually also see it up in your regression output, how things are often going to be looked like. So you see here it's called underscore cons. So it's the same name it carries over. It's not going to trick you. So suppose we want to calculate the predicted value for something with miles per gallon of, what is a good value here? Oh, 20 was within the range. So let's do that. So we want to say, okay, we need to access B. We want to look at miles per gallon. That's the name of the variable. And we want to try with 20. And then we want to, for the last, we need the reparation rate cutoff is just saying one. Not that I remember exactly what all these numbers stand for, but this is just to showcase how this would work. And of course, multiply by one. You can, of course, change the numbers to see what else predicted values that you have. So you see here we get a predicted price now of $4,891, or 92 rounded to a whole number. But what is all this again here? So help files are good. And to round it off with, you can, of course, just look at the help return file here. Complete entry. You see all the things here. So return is for normal stored results in the R class, I believe. And E return is for the E class. And they store roughly the same things. As you can see, differences. E is a lot more. And help files are, well, helpful, I hope. And, of course, you may be even in the, the strange world where, oh, my God, you don't have access to Internet. So that's why help file can come and save you. And often... It's just faster. And of course, PDF manual can actually give you way more explicit things. And just try it out. Learn it for yourself. Sometimes the shortcut is not the best way. And just to actually read it is a very good idea to really get a real understanding for how this software works. And it's something that you can carry over to many other software packages as well. So just because you learn Stata doesn't mean it's useless for other things as well. So just to round off, we did help, and we looked at how to return some of these scalar classes today, or return classes, specifically E and R. There are others out there, but they're less used, at least for our purposes. Now, with that said, I think uh, that rounds off for today. I hope uh, you learned something in Stefan's Classroom, and I hope to see you back for another class here in Stefan's Classroom. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>